what former gang members can teach us about fighting the same dangerous and illegal activities they themselves once carried out. First, let's join a former gangster and current member of GMAC, one of the group's violence interrupters, as he shows us the world he was raised in, a NYCHA housing project. My name is Latrell Johnson, a.k.a. Brett, a.k.a. G. Brett, and I'm a violence interrupter. And right now, we are in Cooper Projects. The job of a violence interrupter is interrupt the transmission of violence to, uh, you know, to mediate situations beforehand or to prevent further retaliation after an incident, whether it's with knives, fighting, or a shooting. So we get in and we're actually hands-on with the youth, the, the high-risk youth, to, and give them our, our most uh, attention. I grew into the gangs, the bloods, the violence, you know, at, at a young age, and it surrounded me, you know, at, it's low income out here. It's, it's not a lot of money floating around. You know, I, I sold drugs at a young age. Started with marijuana. That money was kind of slow. Escalated to crack cocaine. Escalated from that to heroin. So, and this was all around the ages of 13, 14, you know, because there wasn't too many resources out here. We, we didn't, they, we had a community center, but there were no computers in there. You just go in there and play basketball. My basketball wasn't too good. Yeah. You already? <laughs> oh, well, be a thing. This is the b-ball court of our community center. As you can see, the kids is here. In about 20, 30 minutes, it's gonna be about 60 kids in here, maybe a hundred. But they come here, you know, if they don't want to go to the park outside, they ball in here. It's kids, you know, we, we, we grow up and we see the flashy cars, we see the women, we see the money, we see the jewelry, and we like that, you know? So it's a lot of, a lot of times we try to imitate that, that and, and live it and go out and try and fail. You know, so and it's like there's nothing else that, you know, the media has given us. They're promoting the violence to shoot them up, and it's like that's cool. So this is all we know. This is what we're growing up it's, it's as to think is normal. So this is what we imitate, you know. So it's, it's really not normal, but this is all we see growing up. You know, that's, that's how certain kids choose what they want to do because they, they don't have too many choices. I mean, take the stairs. I don't normally like doing the elevator going down. Watch yourself, watch yourself. We're definitely fed up here, but if you're not living right, if you're not, you know, more so moving, moving right, it's, it's not too much voice that you have. Who's gonna listen to a voice of a drug dealer? You're poisoning, you know, your people, you know, so it's, it's, it's hard to speak up for what's right if, if, if you're not doing right. This is the artist right here, Sin City. You gonna spit something? So, another, another up and coming rapper. You know, another one that's gonna make it out of Cooper Projects. If 
every day it's a pain. The cops trying to arrest us, they not trying to protect us. The block, how does July all these cop silence and hecklers? The schools hire professors, the block hire the felons and hire learning neglectless. The government don't respect us. I'm trying to have better thoughts, but it's hard as hell to correct it when just the other day I ate top ramen for breakfast and just the other night me and my girl had a fight. We ain't angry with each other, we just angry with this life and I'm just trying to make it right and I wrote this for the dreamers, believers, the hopers to let you know this, we all one in the same city. Mm. Yes, sir. Fire. You already know. Good look, Daddy. You already, fire. bro. You already. Fire. Next one. There's um, there's a lot of kids out here like that that express, you know, their anger through their music. They put it in writing. You know, instead of going out and busting somebody in the head, instead of going out and busting police in the head, they write it down. And that's how they express it, you know, instead of picking up the gun. You know, they they great lyricists. They they smart, talented kids, and that's another way that we try to make it out. You know, I used to rap, but I don't rap no more. I ain't getting paid for that. We all in poverty, we all hurting. As far as New York, we're definitely fed up. You know, our people, are, our, our blacks, Latinos, we're being beaten while in cuffs. We're being shot while in cuffs in police custody. And that's not right. You know, at the end of the day, that, that's not right. This is why GMAC is here, you know, to give, to give more resources, give things for these kids to do. To, to stay out of trouble, to, to be able to have that voice to say, listen, what's going on is wrong, you know, so they can stand up and, and have something behind their back. I, I, I embrace where I came from, you know, what I was, that, that was me, that, that helped me to grow and be different and to see, like, look, that's really not you. Let's try something different. Let's, let's, I don't want to hurt my people anymore. I don't, I don't want to you know, poison my people anymore. I don't want to kill my people anymore. I don't, don't want to maim my people anymore. So I, I decided to do something different. Oh, they got it blocked off. Oh, my message is there's change. You can change, but in order to change, you gotta want change. And you really gotta, you know, get out there and look for more positive things to do. Don't just close your mind off to, oh, you've been locked up, you have a felony, or you have a criminal background that all hope is lost, all hope is not lost, because there's people like me, there's people like the Sean Duke and Fatters, there's people out there that has made changes. It's not over. It's a great video. Who keeps the streets safe at night? That is not a trick question. As the proverb goes, it takes a village. In East Flatbush and East New York, this village includes a group of ex-gang members who come out at midnight to patrol the streets and work as GMAC and man up, violence interrupters, like the man we just saw in the video, Ladrell Johnson. While the traditional response to fighting violent crime has been to flood hot spots with more and more police, it may be very telling that gangsters making astronomical community changes and man up even exists and is bringing real positive change. Today, we are happy to welcome back to BK Live, Sean Duke McFadder, founder and CEO of GMAC. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And Aaron Jones, a GMAC violence interrupter, along with brother Andre T. Mitchell, who was the founder and executive director of Man Up. Thank you for being here. Thanks, everybody. So I think a good place to start off is define for us what a violence interrupter is, because I think some people might imagine you walking around and seeing a fight and trying to break it up, but that's not what it is, right? Yeah. So you want to take that? Uh, well, violence interrupter basically is a credible messenger in, in the community. You know, we go out, we build relationships with, with the community, and we have mm -hmm. ties. Like, it would be someone you would know. Like, okay. you know, we go out and you know, mingle with the people, get to know them, and try to see what's going on, build relationships that way. Shanduk, what was your experience in a New York gang that predated you founding GMAC? 
Um, my experience is 1994, while incarcerated as an adolescent in Rikers Island, I became um, one of the first group of young men to join the Bloods in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my life from 94 to 2008 when I was released from my last prison sentence. Um, and that shows me that, it showed me that there was a different need because coming out of prison, there wasn't the right type of programs to help people like myself who had a tendency to use violence to help come over my issues or mm -hmm. just a norm for me. So I decided to do something that made sense, to build a program that worked around those who had those issues like myself. So let me ask you this. How are you more qualified to deal with this than, say, a police officer or a security guard? Are you well received, or are people looking at you like, oh, you're reformed now, now you want to tell me what to do? How are you received by people? Uh, one, I don't, I don't typically use the reformed word. Um, and we also realize that when you use the word former, in society's world, it's like, you're just out of it. You can't be out of the loop in order to be successful in the work that we do. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have a relationship, like he said, credible messengers. Um, and what we realize about young people is they want to be like we were. They look to be that gangster, that person who has the money, the cars, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So us versus the police department is the, the community don't have a relationship with them. They feel that their job is to arrest. Um, our job is to find something other than the arrest, give you a, a antidote, something that helps you not do the same thing, and that's us dealing with from a, a perspective of a public health issue. Mm. Right, and Brother Mitchell, you founded Man Up. Yes. Now, we were talking about violence interrupting. It's not necessarily as it happens. It's more kind of like dealing with the community before they get to a point of uh, being violent. How did you fa find, found Man Up, and what are your violence interrupters? Where do they engage with people on the streets? Well, we, we have now over 10 years uh, as an organization, a nonprofit organization. It was 11 years ago where, when, um, unfortunately, an eight-year-old by the name of Deshaun Hill, he was shot and killed in East New York. And I responded to, to that shooting. I went to the hospital. I was, I was in the ER room when he was pronounced dead. Um, and having already been active in the community, I still felt that there was more I could do. Um, and so I began to just get, you know, the people together that I knew that wasn't afraid to approach the community and began to start listening to them and hearing them out. And what we heard was realistic things. I mean, having grown up in Brownsville and East New York myself, I can still relate to the things that these kids today are, that are what they're going through. So we wanted to just come up with solutions. Like, you know, there's one thing to talk about the problem, and then there's another thing to become the solution. And so Man Up Inc. became part of that solution in our community. And the idea of this issue of violence is to be able to, to respond, as mentioned, like, before it happens, mm -hmm. you know, to be proactive versus reactive. And so that's what we all do. So we have a lot of, like, initial work that we get to based on the things that we hear, based on the relationships that we have. And if we can catch it when it's very young, at its embryonic stage, and be able to be squash the beef or bury that beef at that level, it never erupts into a violent situation that you see played on, on, on the news. Okay. So what are some of those steps and techniques? when dealing with young people in the street or in a school or wherever? Uh, one is, is first um, relating to them. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the main things is our credible message is someone they know from the community. You have to be someone who's better, who's been through the streets. You can't be someone who comes from an Ivy League college and say, I want right. to be a violence interrupter. Right. Two is basically getting them to understand we're not their enemies, we're not against them, that we're out here to help them. Um, once, once there's an established level of comfortability, understand that we're not just going to turn them over for something that it's a crime, technically. Our goal is to really say, okay, what can we do, like A.T. Mitch, you said, to alleviate this as soon as we hear about it? And that's mm -hmm. what's more important to us with them. They understand that we are trying to stop something. And you'd be surprised how someone who lives in the community don't want something to happen, but they don't know who to turn to mm -hmm. um, to do that. And their fear is, if I turn to police, then I'm, I'm, I'm pegged as a snitch, so what do I do? And that's where we come in at. So in our presence in the community makes a big difference as well, because we are constantly we're of the neighborhood. So it's not a job for us. This is a mission. So you see us literally, like, after school. You see us during the holiday weekends. You see us at mm -hmm. night where the parties are about to take place. You see us when we are, you know, basically catching you when you first coming out your front door. And that makes a big difference. We're not just there on a tour or a shift. Literally, we're part of the neighborhood. It makes a big difference in the constant reinforcement. The messages that we disseminate throughout the community on a constant basis helps change the, t the conversation, which hopefully will change the behavior pattern. So, Aaron, I want to ask you about your experience as a violence interrupter, but also what made you leave gang life in order to make a positive influence in the community? Well, you, you can never really say you, you're done with 
anything when you're doing this work, you know what I'm saying? Because the people have to be able to relate to you. Right. You have to remember we're dealing with young minds here, and you know, t you have to just really be able to relate to them. And my time as a violence interrupter, you know, I find myself, you know, sometimes looking at some of the young individuals like, wow, if I had some, if he had somebody here to help him, or somebody to tell him, or show him, I don't think that most of these kids would be into the things that they're into. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it goes back to, to the days when, when we were coming up, you know, we, we had little programs like Jackie Robinson, High Energy, and things of that nature, but as time went on, you know, the kids got more violent, you know, less parents, you know, it's, it's a whole assumption of everything that adds up, but, you know, the experience, it feels good to help but you know, it's, 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 it's actually, it's actually, I'm still learning mm -hmm. as I'm going. You know. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you're making a difference with these young minds that may uh, turn to violence, but you're able to catch them and give them a positive influence? Well, you see, when, when, when like, like Shan Duke said, when we coming up, those young kids that's growing up right now, they saw us, they saw us in that way, and they wanted to be us, like actually be like that. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's just say, you know, my background, it was the Bloods, so. If you saw me blood and going crazy, mm -hmm. then maybe they, that was the fad for them. But when you see me doing something different, why can't I tell that man that that respected me as a, you know, I'm no, I'm no, no more or less of the same person I was. I'm just still me. Mm -hmm. Why can't I tell that man to do good? Why can't I, you know, mm -hmm. help yeah. him? You know what I'm saying? So. That's how, that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I think, think that's excellent. Yeah, yeah, I think it's cute, but kids see the before and after. And like you said, it's not someone coming up in a Brooks Brothers suit being prescriptive, like what you need to do is dot, 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 but someone coming in and saying, I can relate to what you're going through. By but do we right. do eventually get them to, to, to elevate themselves into a Brooks Brothers suit? Okay, exactly. Because you'd be surprised, like Why a not? lot of the VIs that we have throughout the city, everybody don't necessarily dress down. We don't, mm. we don't feed into the stigma. Right. See, there's a stereotype. Mm. We want people to understand, coming from our neighborhoods, that you don't have to be limited right. to just one style of living. Right. You can elevate yourself to the levels where we are today. We're executive directing mm -hmm. our own organizations. We, at times, have to wear that Brooks Brothers yes. suit sure. when we're going into certain sure. environments and be accepted. And so we are actually showing people from our neighborhoods and our communities that you can evolve into all levels of life. Just because you come from a certain area doesn't mean that you have to be reduced to that. Okay, so tell me about the kind of violence that you interrupt. I mean, for our organizations, um, we're not the only organizations that do this work, but we're like Life Camp, um, our names from Grassroots, Kings of Kings. Kings. Um, the grassroots organizations for us is, um, one, it comes from different It comes from different fields. It may come from a parent, it may come from a school, a teacher, a principal, it may come from someone who just doesn't want to deal with the issues in their community, and, and they reach out to us, and they, and they tell us um, this incident is happening. It may be as small as an argument, and that, that means everything to us, because an argument is what escalates. Sometimes it's domestic violence. It's a brother mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting upset because a, a boyfriend touched his sister, mm -hmm. and our job is to immediately go into that and get involved with the high-risk individuals, go, guys, girls we know have guns, um, who have histories, who've been incarcerated and go right into the trenches with them, right? We're talking about sometimes 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and figuring out what the issue is, mediation, sometimes bringing them out of that place into a comfort zone, which may be one of our offices, and sitting down and saying, okay, what what is the issue here? For example, we had an issue right across from my office, which is McDonald's, about 30 boys. Mm. And didn't make it on the news because we I wouldn't Aaron and a couple of the team was on point. They saw the incident, they ran, got in, in the midst of it, and right in the middle of it, they were able to stop it right there in front of McDonald's, find out what the issue is, show the young boys that what they were arguing about didn't make no sense, mm -hmm. because that's what we're learning most, most of the time, it's frivolous nonsense, mm -hmm. and getting them to shake hands that's and right. walk away and alleviate the beef, right? But in, addition, but in addition to that level of violence that we interrupt, we also interrupt very severe, serious Fact. scenarios, yeah. Such as whereas like people what? have already been uh, assaulted. Shot. Some mm -hmm. people may have been stabbed. People may have been shot and or killed. Yeah. And so our interruption is on multiple levels, where it requires a certain level of skill set, whereas we understand the level of danger, all of those things that are associated with it, and we try to get it to hopefully get to some, what we try to do is buy time. And so that the community that is traumatized by the violence hopefully has a chance to heal themselves in the interim. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of behind the scenes work. There's a lot of delicate, very sensitive work that we can't sometimes disclose in public, mm -hmm. but yet we are in, not necessarily involved, but we are working both ends to try to, to mediate a situation that's serious. Mm -hmm. and 
not mm-hmm. only that, to piggyback off, like, we also, it's like, it gives the young men and women a chance to save face, because a lot of times, yeah. the kids don't want to look like, Looks, oh, I'm, right. I'm soft, or I'm punk, you know, the foolish yeah. pride thing. So if you don't want to squash it, let us squash it. But right. I think that's important, though, because I know how kids are in these environments. If you look like the punk or if you look like yourself, you mm-hmm. are immediately have a target on your back. Unfortunately. So you, unfortunately. you it, unfortunately, I'm not saying it's right, but you kind of sometimes have to do something. Otherwise, it's going to be a day in and or, day out kind so of thing. Our message now is, yeah, you have to do something. And right. doing whatever that something is it's, doesn't mean that you have to be engaged in violence. Right, but you right. walking come away, to someone like you. Yeah, we're coaching them and we're examples okay, of right. it. Today, we walk away so from you're things. You're interrupting right. the violence, but you're also interrupting the foolish part. And showing right. an example. And right. showing them that it's okay that we bring right. the popularity to being positive. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. Society has mm-hmm. made negative positive, mm-hmm. negative in. Yeah. Right, so the goal is to change that, saying, okay, me telling you not to fight, not to take it to the next level, it's okay. You're not going to be pegged as a sucker, right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, they gravitate, so they like to be part of something new, something... This is the new mm-hmm. trend that we're setting, saying, okay, you can be that voice. You can be that voice of change, you can be that voice of someone who helps somebody else. And that's what we try to teach our young people, right? You don't necessarily have to have the job of a violence disruptor to be someone who mediates something that you hear your friends saying. That's right. yeah. And that's how we saturate the community. And the goal mm-hmm. is to get everyone in the community to be violence interrupters, whether officially or not. Correct. Right. Yeah, Correct. Brother Mitchell, last question uh, since we, before we lose you guys. Um, right. Clearly, GMAC and Man Up are making wonderful waves um, in the community. How, where do you go from here? How do you get more people involved in organizations like point. this? Well, where do we go from here? Because we have a model that is data-driven. Right, so there is statistics that support our successes, and hopefully we can be able to share this with the city and the, and the state, and we hopefully we actually are always lobbying for more funding so that we can replicate our work in other communities and other neighborhoods and other precincts where, unfortunately, violence is the norm. Mm-hmm. And so what we are doing now is just going on tour, and we spend a lot of time in other communities and educating people about the work that we're doing. Hopefully, through shows like this, this is proof that, you know, communities can can be involved and don't have to necessarily put their lives at risk. Um, there's a very positive way, a very community-friendly way at reducing the level of violence, and we treat it as a public health approach to creating public safety. And so hopefully the goal is to replicate this throughout the borough, um, hopefully throughout the city. And I want to touch on the point with that. Also, it's constantly stated that the, the level of gun violence has went up um, during the summer, but we also like to point out that that's not particularly so in the areas where we have this funding and these type of organizations hmm. working, right? Um, and, and the way we do that is because we deal with it like a disease. We focus on the hot spot and we, fo- and we, and we put our attention there because funding don't allow us to go so far out because you're talking about manpower and being able to do all the things necessary. So we do understand that, yes, there's violence that has gone up in our communities, but in certain areas, we are able to keep it down to a certain point. And if we can show through those data-driven res- um, results, that this is factual, that more people will be able to support this type of work that we do. Okay. Well, thank you for doing this sort of community policing in the way that, you know, many others can. I think it's, right. you know, remarkable work. And please come back and talk about it again sometime soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.